Today I wanted to talk about something you rarely hear preached about, which is pruning. It's uh, something that's done when you're growing plants and when we're saved, it's when it starts because that's when a seed is planted for it to grow to bear fruit. So basically it starts, when you heard about Christ, we were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. Is it? You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. That wasn't and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. When your seed is planted after Christ, when you accept Christ, not only is it put there by the Holy Spirit, but in order for it to be watered, to salt, for the seed to soften, to start growing, you have to read the Bible, you have to pray, and you have to Lord, be willing to change. And a lot of that starts with trials and tribulations of being molded. But eventually, as you start, the plant starts to grow, other things have to have to take place. They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No distance seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Now there's two types of discipline. One where you pay for something you've done. The other is, it has to do with training. Some plants, like for example, tomatoes, when it grows a vine, you have to put a piece, a stick in the ground or a dowel in the ground and tie the vine to that stick so it grows up. Because it's a natural thing is for it to fall over and lay on its side. Which if you leave it like that, it'll rot, it'll, bugs can get to it and cause it to just ruin the whole harvest. So over time, so it to go straight, you have to train it. And that has to do a lot with helping with the seed growth because you have to learn discipline to read, discipline to pray, discipline to get rid of all the to get rid of all the bad habits of how you used to live, discipline to stay away from temptation, discipline to learn how to listen to God and so you could run away from any temptation. It, it, it's a process. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you have remained in me. As a plant starts to grow at a certain point, certain branches won't grow properly. Some sag, some become wilted, others become stagnant, and you have to cut it off. It doesn't, when he says that any branch does not bear fruit, does not mean kicking anyone out of salvation or turn away. At a certain point, and it starts to sprout leaves, you have to trim these leaves, unless it does the same thing. It gets, and if, it gets if you don't trim it in time, it will kill the whole entire plant because it infects it. And in some cases, those leaves and those branches will regrow and grow properly. But it, it's necessary. If you want something to grow fruit, you have to keep it maintained, groomed, and get rid of it. And that's how it works. You've got to get rid of your old self, which means you have to get rid of certain sin. Certain things have to be pruned away. Certain things have to be cut off. Some things have to be got rid of. Otherwise, it infects you being able to be fruit, and it leaves you open for temptation from the devil to go back into your old life. That's why you see a lot of people go back, is they didn't take the time to discipline themselves, and they didn't take the time to let God prune them, get rid of these things before they move forward. Or in some cases, people witnessed to them, saved, got them saved, and then left them on their own.
Now it's important that all that happen so God can do the following. In a large house there is no articles, not only gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes, some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instrumental for special purposes, made holy, useful, uh, useful to the master and prepared to do any good for his work. Once you're ready to bear fruit, God can send you out to save others, to minister others, to heal others spiritually, emotionally, whatever is needed for that person to come back to him come back from their old life, or even accept it. The fruit you grow was never meant to keep within us. It's meant to go out and plant for another seed to grow and for another another person to go on and do, do the same. Everything God does multiplies and never fails. That's how you know somebody who's false from someone who's actually sincere. A person will always speak I, will always speak themselves, will try to bring glory to themselves. There is a reason why there is a phrase, many are called, but few are chosen. The reason for that is many do not want to change what they want. They want to stay in an illusion that they're perfect, that they don't have to change, that there's nothing wrong now that they're saved. They just want to stay stagnant or stay in their sin or not even acknowledge it. They just think, well, I'm good, I'm fine. Others want to do it their own way. And when you do it your own way, you fall away because you can't, you can't serve and save others by doing it your own way. Others simply just do it for their own works. The best example is if you've ever seen a tree that had bark and you'll see certain, you find the bark stripped away, but then you come back months later and that bark has grown, regrown. That's how the same thing goes. One part gets sawed away, another gets pruned away, another falls away, all by God's hand all by done by his design by what he wants you to do and what he's called you to and the only thing you have to do is if you're not sure where to go ask pray and ask him just to extend an olive branch just somewhere to start don't add, don't expect anything don't do anything and go in just expecting to do what God wants not expecting it to go anywhere I mean I never expected to be ministering to people I mean, I, just, I always used to joke it wouldn't happen. But the most important thing is to ask God to prune you, is to ask God to show you your true self so it can be gotten rid of. It's not easy, it's not easy to find the truth that you're wicked and you've got all these things still haunting you. Because we like to think that, well, we're okay, we're good, and because we're saved, that's all we have to do. So make sure you get rid of a lot of that stuff by letting God prune it away. Amen. Right? Amen. That's it. Hello, I'm Pastor Larry Evans, and you've been watching a New Life Church video. If it has been a blessing, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on it. We'd love to hear from you. Our website is www.newlifenwin.org and has our schedule as well as more information about us. God bless.